presentation here, it's a beginner. Uh, I will show our work at Brazil uh, in the Sao, University of Sao Paulo and State University uh, of Sao Paulo are two public universities in Brazil. I will try to read the uh, being on the time and um, if I do or sleep in the English, please don't consider uh, my mistakes. It's uh, a bit nervous. So here we go. Um, well, the, the studies of uh, Greek and Roman civilization have always been considered a pillar of humanities and uh, a fundamental part of the well structure uh, education in Brazil. Typically characterized by a traditional hyper specialization that often disencourages research uh, of classical materials. Studies in ancient Mediterranean and classical archaeology happen in Brazil in two major academic centers. The one in Rio de Janeiro, called Museum, uh, Museu Nacional or National Museum, and the other one in São Paulo, in the Museum of Archaeology and Ethnology of the University of São Paulo. As you may know, our first uh, mention about the National Museum. In uh, September last year, this museum burned down, something that can be compared uh, to what happened with uh, Notre Dame recently. And the National Museum houses artifacts from Egypt, um, Greek Roman art, and uh, some of the first fossils found in Brazil. It was claimed a loss of more than 100,000 artifacts. And here you can see the National Museum of Rio de Janeiro. The news about this uh, um, situation and how it burns down in September last year, 2018. The Museum of Archaeology and Ethnology of São Paulo, the other one, that I'm from, uh, deals with classical archaeology in the country, and in this sense, uh, concepts of digital humanities have promoted a fundamental change in the studies of classical um, archaeology and what concerns research and teaching and archaeology and landscape archaeology. Digital humanities are an emergent field of studies that are engaged in the collection, preservation, and accessibility of cultural heritage, as well as in the analysis of tests and artifacts using new methodologies and new technologies. The digital humanities are both a field with a discernible set of lines of research, practices, and academic methodologies, but also a vague umbrella term use it to describe application of digital, uh, hum of digital technology in the inquiry of uh, humanities, traditional humanities. Um, recent interest in among archaeologists in digital mapping is indicative of a trend that recognizes the importance of developing geotemporal um, visualization, special analysis, and develop of a new uh, mapping platform to analyze complex social, culture, and historical dynamics. The concepts of digital minutes and the principles of fair, fundability, accessibility, interoperability, and uh, reusability allow us amplify our abilities to deal with digital media as well as our whole as archaeologists in the reconstruction of the past. In that sense, the space has been reduced to the palm of our hands. If before, a uh, few years, let's say 10, 20 years ago, uh, mapping or cartography was a very specialization, today we have in the palm of our hands. 
According to the recent data from the Brazilian Institute of Geography and Statistics, IBGE, 86% 88, uh, of the Brazilians declare themselves as a Christians, divided between 64.6 Roman Catholic and 22 uh, new Pentecostal movements. Here you can see the demography. This showed that in comparison with 91% uh, of the population in the 70s that declared themselves Roman Catholic, uh, the group declined. So the segment denominated New Pentecostal in the fourth years increased from 5% of the population to 22% of the Brazilian population. The understanding of the region uh, for Israel, for Brazilians, besides involving uh, usually fascination and admiration because uh, it's related to their faith, it's also important because little knowledge are available in Portuguese. A very specific language that every time that I present myself as Brazilian, people start to talk to me in Spanish. So, Portuguese and Spanish are pretty much similar, but not the same. Um, the understanding of the region, in this sense, it, uh, it's the idea to provide uh, more information about this region. And the importance, it's because, besides the little knowledge available in Portuguese, religious mobility, in this sense, is a fundamental aspect of social understand, both in late antiquity and during the Roman and Byzantine periods in Israel. In the current context, precisely because the capacity, the capacity to manage cosmology and retain power and political relations. So here you have the maps that shows in 2091 uh, the the Catholics were 83% of the population. Then we have the boom of this new movement of neo Pentecostal, that's a lineage or a branch of Protestants in Brazil. And you can see that the last census that we have it, uh, it spread to the country. And now we have a decrease of this population. Mapping the Roman and Byzantine period uh, in archaeological remains uh, with the collaboration of Tel Aviv University aimed to gap the knowledge of the Brazilian society and between Portuguese speakers. In other words, it seeks to contribute to the update archaeological scientific knowledge of the so-called Holy Land, a geographic area of knowledge that's in, uh, impregnate with myths, sacralization, and uh, disinformation in our country. Usually when Brazilians have the opportunity to contact uh, the material culture, they are doing through priests, pastors, and religious segments. In addition to that, the team or the, uh, the topic of Jewish diaspora in Brazil, it's uh, quite unique. Once Portuguese Jews, a huge population, a community between 20 and 25% of the local population are around uh, 140, 97, before the program of uh, Lisbon, sought refuge in countries like in the Mediterranean, North Africa, Holland, and the newly discovered lands of America, seeking to escape of the Inquisition. The Portuguese Inquisition expanded its scope of operation for Portugal to Portuguese colonial possessions, such as Brazil, where it continued as a religious tribunal investigating judging cases of a violation of the principles of Roman Catholic Orthodox until 108-21. 
So not that long time ago, in the 9th century, we usually have the idea that Inquisition, it finished in the Middle Age. But we are talking about Inquisition and people being processed in Brazil because uh, to be Jews in 9th century. So not that time, uh, long time ago. Moreover, since many current field services are generally completed on a local scale, there is a, a ample scope for new perspective uh, on the region and comparative studies to develop new approaches to the material culture and the past occupation. The absence of a systematic regional comparison in the studies of classical archaeology and the inside, inside Mediterranean conducted in Brazil emphasize, emphasize the need to explore uh, new avenues of dialogue and an understanding of the uh, difference between uh, regional developments. Therefore, UNESCO and USP, through the laboratory of uh, through the laboratory of archaeology and uh, ethno uh, uh, to the, the laboratory of, of archaeology uh, of a Roman provincial archaeology, sorry, has been developed a pioneer project in Brazil since 2011, addressing uh, related uh, topics in uh, GIS and uh, digital um, archaeology, supported by an internal uh, system called Barolo. This collecting data um, has been argued that is a slow, but is true affecting epistemologists and ontologists in the country. Not only they introduce new methods, which tend to focus on identification of new partners in data, but also support new narratives and access to new knowledge. In this sense, Brazilians, uh, Brazilian University is committed to the broad uh, horizon of possibilities to build excellence in the humanities and more access to knowledge. Our research structure, department and disciplines are being transformed, uh, helping to promote new forms of media and academic production. And here you have some of our uh, products that are available, free access, in our website that's supported by the university. Um, then we are storing data about the transition of the Roman to Byzantine period. As you can see, uh, archaeological data, photograph, petrography, all kinds of uh, knowledge collected in these platforms that uh, allow us to produce maps of the religious mobility and late antiquity. And here you can see that Jews and the Roman time, once again, they were expelled from Jerusalem, but they doesn't leave the area and they just migrate to upper parts of the Galilee, as you can see in blue uh, in these maps. So to finish, we are developing uh, 3D modeling in this archaeological archaeological site called Apollonia. Apollonia is a heritage uh, UNESCO uh, world uh, heritage, and we are developing um, 3D models based on the archaeological excavations in the site. Uh, that is uh, completed and apported in this digital map WebGIS that we are developing. So, to finish, all archaeologists, archaeologists know that at some level, each uh, layer, layer excavated, um, are there no going back. Therefore, excavations implies a change uh, in the character of the in situ, even with the increasing of developed non-invasive techniques. 
Precisely because of this fact, there is a need to record our work very carefully. We are still great destroyers. In the sense, contemporary archaeology, called it of the third millennium, is capable to process, interpret, and communicate much more data and information than the last two centuries. Therefore, it would be an emergent and a transdisciplinary process that represents a great expansion of the scope of access to culture, heritage, and traditional inquiries and humanities, precisely due to question values, values interpretative uh, representational practices, as well as strategies of creations of meaning, complexities, ambiguities, in the human being experience in the world. So, thank you so much.